So it's 1974, and you get the loan to buy the vending machines. Dad knows the vending machine business really well, because he's been doing it for the last decade. And so he um, decides he's going to buy 10 used vending machines to start this, this thing. What, do, what are your thoughts on this happens? The day he quit his job, Holy Trinity had a roller, roller skating party down on Neville Island. Mm -hmm. Me and Tom and Tommy and Donnie went, I took them to the skating party. Mm -hmm. I cry all the time I went around the floor. <laughs> I skated my heart out and I cry all the time. I was so scared. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because you were... Because we moved into this house. I had two boys at Holy Trinity that I had to pay tuition for. Mm -hmm. I was scared shitless. Now, what year did he quit Servimation? Do you remember? Well, he started Laura Food System. I mean, our company in 1974. But he didn't, he didn't quit Servimation and immediately just start the vending. He had like a business, two businesses in between. He was gonna be a stockbroker. He owned no, he, he was, um, uh, garage door opener. Oh yeah, the overhead door business. And then, before then, we were still in McKeesport. He bought this old truck, a relic truck, to start an ice cream business, going door to door to sell popsicles and fencicles. Like Schwann's does. Yeah, and all of a sudden, they started selling them at the, the, at the grocery stores. And dad couldn't make any money on it. So they were, he was fortunate enough for the people who sold him the truck was able to take, would take it back and give him back the money. That's that, a, by the way, that is an act of God. Like once you sell something normally, most people yeah. want out. Um, so he, he was able to liquidate the truck and then he was yeah. in the overhead garage door business with a guy that was stealing from him, right? Ed Zambo. Ed Zambo. Um, and he sold it to him. And then he went on this um, Do you remember what when how he determined He sold sold bargains. Oh the bargain business too he did, yeah. He he did that while he was running his own business. He'd go down one side of the street and sell bargains. He'd go down the other side of the street and sell his vending company. And at the time, the vending company was primarily coffee machines and grocery stores. Right. The first one was Thoroughfare in Crafton. That was the first customer, Thoroughfare in Crafton. Yeah. He went Rudy Zapancic. I think that was his name. He said he went and he sold him on it. And once he sold that one, then he got the other one. Because he was able to say, hey, call Rudy, because he'll say that this, yeah. is where, this is a good opportunity. And like he got these 10 vending machines and they took them apart in a basement and then you cleaned them up, right? Him and Tom went up to Boston or New York, I can't remember, mm -hmm. and came back with these 10 used vending machines. They put them in the basement, in the garage. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Took, they took them apart, and during the day, I would clean them and clean them all up, and then the boys would come home from school and put them all back together. Yeah, all right. Um, and then Dad would place them, and he would also, like, like, it doesn't take a lot of product to run a coffee route, so he probably just ran it with a car. Oh, yeah. He drove the car around. Okay. And when I was a uh, hostess at EI in Rosedale, mm -hmm. I ran it from my car. I had a black and gold Chevy. Yeah, okay. I think that's what I had. But we're now, by the time you get to EI Rosedale, it's not just coffee machines anymore. No. We're running like a whole a whole operation there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got the 10 vending machines in the basement, and he's selling bar guns. He's selling bar guns and, what's the name of the bar gun company? Uh, Multiflow. Multiflow, that's right. Um, Hey, I've got a pretty good memory for it. Yeah, I'm actually I'm quite impressed. I mean, of course you have a good memory, but like you've got, you got dates, you've got names. It's, it's wonderful. Um, 
do you remember the first non-coffee account that dad got? Where he had to like go and get a snack machine and start like downstairs he had, uh, you know, cases of pop and whatever. Do you remember the first one? Because it would have been a big leap for him to say, you know what, I'm not just doing coffee machines anymore. We're going to do... Lee Norris up here okay. was up here uh, at the corner of Campbell's Run and Route 60. What is what was Lee Norris? It was some kind of a company. Oh, so it was like a like a it was a business to business yeah. company. It wasn't yeah. like a furniture store. Or and like I a... think they wanted food, whether they wanted snacks or what I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I remember Lee Norris, and then Westinghouse, ACAS. Um, they wanted food. They wanted food. And I think this is what pushed us into the commissary. At what point, so let's try this. At what point did you move out of Harbison Road into 4375 Campbell's Run Road? Boy, I don't remember that. You don't it, remember. Like at some point he decides he's going to rent this big building down there. At the time it was massive. Oh, it was massive. I mean, we took a little corner and we put our chips and everything in that we stored in the garage and moved into that building. And then from there, we hired Bud Getty. Oh, yeah. Who's the first employee? Bud Getty. Bud Getty. I thought, what about Dave? Oh, Dave Schuster. Dave Schuster. He helped Dad the first. How old do you think Dave Schuster was when he was helping? Early 20s? Yeah. Okay. And then Bud Getty is the first... Rot man. Bud Getty is the first route man. Yes. Bud Getty hated me. I don't blame him. He did. I was, but I was a bit of, I was like a punk. I, 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 I like lit a match and threw it on some plastic and like caught a fire in the warehouse. <laughs> I was a bit no, of, you jumped on his car. And then I also jumped on the hood of his car and like scratched it up. Oh, he was, he was, yeah. <laughs> he had like a big, like a big white trash Trans Am. <laughs> um, so you move down and there's the office and. At this point, at one point, Dad has a salesman whose name is Cy, not Cy Young, but he played, he was like a, he played for the Steel, football for the Steelers at one point. Remember this uh, guy? I'm correct in saying that, right? Cy something? Yeah, I think. There was also Barb Sarsfield. She worked the office. She worked at the office, and we had Marshall Weichel and another one in the commissary. Jean Senek. Jean Senek, that's the other one. There was like she this... ran it first. Jean Senek did. I ran it first. And counted the money. And I counted the money. I ran the commissary. I did the office. Checking all the boxes, right? So I was a big part of that. Oh, I, of, of course, everybody knows. Everybody knows. What was your favorite thing to do? Did you like work, working on the commissary and making the sandwiches? No. Did you like counting the money? No. Answer the phone? Mm-hmm. I'd rather answer the phone. Because you had a secretarial background. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so we're 4375 until 1986. So the business has started in 74. And 12 years later, Dad buys the company that he had left. Servimation. Servimation. We were out in California when he heard that Servimation of Pittsburgh was for sale. Right. And we got back here, and he went right into it. He was pretty excited. And at this point in 86, Tom would have been 25 years old, uh, about. Don's 24 years old. Rick's 18. Yeah, I, I certainly remember that. So, um, nice. 